from Los Angeles, California, where the Mad Scientist Party are. Oh, whoops. That made me forget to hit the button. Hold on, we can fix that. What is up, friendaroonies? And welcome back to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name is Kevin Kraft, joined once again by a man who has sworn off wearing pants and underwear and is holding up a giant magnifying glass so everyone can see him jack his boner. That's Jeff Clark. Hey, what's up, everyone? And beaming to us from a Burger King bathroom... The bearded Booger King himself, Shuddy Boy. Yo. All right. Back at it once again. Good to see you, fellas. Good to see you, friend. Yeah, good to see you. And good to see you, Puminati. I hope everybody is uh, safe after the hurricanes and stuff. I know a lot of those hit the same area. I had um, a bunch of family I was checking in on. Everybody made it through okay? Yep. I was checking in on our homie Seek. And um, especially because I know Orlando. Oh, yeah. He lives in Orlando now. And Orlando got hit and had some flooding. And I saw articles about like how they were um, having to air rescue some people out of there. So I, I checked with him, with him before the storm hit. And then in the morning, I was like, how'd you do? How'd you do? I saw there was flooding and shit. He's like, nope. Everything is A-OK. Perfectly fine. No issues. Um, my grandma, because my grandma lives in Jupiter, and now that my mom moved back to New Jersey, she, like she has less people there to you know sort of rely on. You know, my mom was f- you know five ten minutes down the road from her. Um, my grandpa died, so he's not around for her anymore. Her twin sister met some dude at church and got married, so she moved out of Florida and moved to fucking Boston. <laughs> um. My my uncle is MIA still, so she only has like one or two people there that can check on her. And you know she's eighty six. She's old school. She's she's tough. So she sees stuff coming about the hurricane. She's like, ah, fuck it, I'll be fine. And you know where she lives wasn't in the direct path really of it. But before the storm even hit the other side of Florida, the you know um, Atlantic side of the state was getting fucking crushed like tornadoes and shit and crazy thunderstorms. And the family group thread was like, yeah, Nana is, she is hunkered down in her bathroom. The power is out and there's tornado warnings for the area. So she's just hanging out in the bathroom until things pass. And I'm just like, Oh, that's, that's a horrible thing to imagine. My, my grandma sitting by herself in the bathroom with no power. Yeah, it's terrible. But, you know, it she all... could have been taking a nice relaxing bath with some candles. It's the perfect time to do that. Don't be gross, Shuddy. I wasn't being gross. I didn't say <laughs> she was... That's the thing you're talking Nana. about. I, I said no, there was no bean flicking insinuated or anything like that. Well, now you're insinuating some bean flicking by, by not insinuating uh, it. And now you podcast. just insinuated it by repeating it. This podcast going off the rails. Look, it was Turned insinuated. Turned into a fucking knife fight in the dark. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I, I think my my aunt, she lives in Delray Beach. They're all not, like, super far from each other, but there was some picture that she sent that about a mile away from her friend who lives close by, a fucking big-ass construction dumpster just landed on someone's roof. It's like, on their oh roof? Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, the winds were so strong. And this isn't even the hurricane. This was just, like, the storm preceding it, I guess. But it lifted up one of those massive, massive, long rectangular dumpsters and dropped it on someone's house. It didn't go through the roof? It it was hard to tell because it was take, the picture was taken from the driveway, so you could just see it sitting on there. But I'm sure it crushed some of it. But it didn't, like, yeah. fall all the way through to the ground floor. But, you know... Hoping uh, everybody in the Puminati and their families made it out unscathed. I know some people lost a lot. 
And I also know like their home insurance situation in Florida is kind of fucked. It was a bad time for things to kind of go tits up down there. But uh, yeah, glad to hear that the to report at least that the people I know and you know seek. I know a lot of the Puminati are you know still invested in seek, and I can happily report seek is fine. That's good to hear. Yeah. I do kind of feel like an asshole for not checking on him. Ah, don't worry. I was I was the MSPH representative. <laughs> yeah, you're our conduit to <laughs> <Yeah>. seek. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, good work, Kevin. Good work. I also got to see Jeff over the weekend, which was cool. I feel like living in Culver City means it's not the gigantic pain in the asshole that it used to be when I was in Studio yeah. City. No, you're right off the 405. Now, obviously, the 405 could be a fucking nightmare from time to time, but uh, the couple times that I went to your place, it's been pretty smooth sailing. Yeah. Did you guys play the new Mario Party? Is that what this was for? Because it doesn't come out until next week, but we did play the Nintendo Switch, Shuddy. Because when Jeff got here, uh, Carl was still out running errands and picking up another player for Catan. And to kill time, I was like, hey, let's play some Switch Sports, which is the exact same thing as Wii Sports. You just use the one of the Joy-Cons to, you know, play tennis, bowling, golf, what have you. And uh, I, can, I can honestly say with a straight face that Jeff is really bad at sports. I'm, I'm way better at sports than Jeff is. <laughs> Those are actually, if you count bowling, those are probably my two worst sports. I can't hit a golf ball straight to save my life, and I don't even know what my career high is in bowling. It's not higher than 150, much higher than 150. I mean, 150 is tough. For just like an average person, I don't even know if I've ever bowled a 150 in real life. Well, I used to go like, I used to do like midnight bowling uh, pretty regularly when I was like in high school because, you know, it was, uh, I was kind of what you did, you know, you get some booze and you go I go galactic bowling and oh that sounds um, awesome that sounds awesome yeah it's pretty sweet we should do it actually <laughs> i'm fucking so down there's a bowling alley <laughs> right by where we went to dinner <clears throat> oh nice yeah dude let's do it like across the street um, so i just I, so when i was playing when i was bowling more regularly the highest i would ever get was Still not a very high number, and I have some friends that are fucking nasty at bowling. Uh, but I guess everyone does. It's not that big of a deal. I also have friends that are nasty at golf, and I can't fucking hit a golf ball straight. But I, I actually, it was a struggle for me the uh, Wii golf and the Wii bowling. I wasn't, I wasn't sure how to work the controllers for a while there, and they would only be like one round games, and then I would be eliminated and get <laughs> kind of butt hurt and sit on the couch. <laughs> Like I thought you had to when you when you when you swing the controller and the and the bowling uh form or I thought you had to release the trigger at the same time you got like to the end of your No, that's why I told you when text. I handed you the controller I was like you hold the trigger down to bowl and you don't let go of it like you did in Wii Sports you have to hold the trigger the whole time and you're like okay And then well, your no, character I, in golf yeah your character in golf, kept I was dropping, able to figure it out. Your character kept dropping the ball. You're like, what's going on? <laughs> and then like, you would get gutter balls because it was a, you ran out of time. And I was like, are you letting go of the trigger when you, when you do the motion to bowl? And you're like, yeah. I was like, well, no, you don't, no. you don't do that. See, I thought you told me not to let go of the trigger when we played golf after we played bowling. I don't, I don't think I, I heard either. I didn't hear you or you didn't tell me not to let go of the trigger before bowling. So, yeah. Either way, it was uh, pretty bad, and I because I had to play with Carl's character, I I totally fucked up her stats. She's, she's probably mad at me. <laughs> nah, she doesn't give a flying fuck. She most All of right. the time I have to play because like when you you get like points for every match you play, and then it goes towards unlocking cosmetics that have like a a timestamp on them. So like it, it there's like a group of them, and it's like you can get like. A new hair color. You can get this wrap for your bowling ball. You can get, you know, all this shit. 
but it picks them at random. So she'll see something in this group and she'll be like, oh, I want that, that cosmetic. And it's like, you don't get to select it. You just have to keep winning until you get lucky enough to where the randomizer picks it. So I am often just sitting there grinding away so I can unlock, you know, a cheek mole like Marilyn Monroe for a game that she kind of doesn't give a fuck about. But, um, I, I, Dude, it was hilarious to me. I, this is kind of random, but, um, same combo. Um, when Carl got there and told us that she was downstairs, Kevin, like <laughs> Kevin, like finished his game. <laughs> like he didn't want to turn off the game before going. It's like, well, dude, could, it's fucking wee bowling. Does it matter that much about your score? <laughs> I had, I had like, I had like out the door. I had like two frames left and it's online. So you can't like pause <laughs> it. It's like in real time. So it was just like, all right, well I was, I was like waiting to get the heads up text. Like, Hey, on our way or Hey, this is happening. And I could have, yeah. Stop before she just gave you the hey, I'm downstairs. And I was like, all right, Kevin I'll be down like, in a few hey. minutes. <laughs> um, imagine, Jeff, if you were better at it, you could have taken over. He could have trusted you to to bowl for him while he went and let Carl in. This seems like a failure on your part. Well, no, we were Kevin's we were part. leaving for the festivities. Oh, like to leave, leave. Yeah. Okay. Not bring her in. No. My mistake. Sorry, Jeff. But like okay. I don't know, because I I Jeff, did you ever play Wii Sports when that came out? When like everybody was playing it, I've played Wii Sports twice, and oh, okay. both has been around you. Well, what about <laughs> what about real life golf? Like when you like, do you ever go to a Top Golf or a driving range to just hit balls, not necessarily like play on a yeah. a real course? Yeah, I've done that a few times, a bunch of times. Because I like Jeff. Jeff couldn't get the thing down with the trigger, so the character just kept dropping the ball. And you're on the clock, and when you run out of time, it just du- deducts you as a gutter ball. And then when he finally got it, it was like it was like Aziz Ansari in Parks and Rec when he's like holding the ball two handed and like gets the momentum between his legs and lets it go. The ball was going at like negative five miles an hour and would like hit the pins, and it had so little momentum that the pins would just stop the bowling ball. Yeah, yeah it would like drool would, over. The ball, <laughs> the ball would fall over. Yeah. <laughs> so then I was just like, I was like, well, wait a second. There's other games on here. Maybe, maybe golf will be more fun. And Hold I, on. Okay. My last, my last frame, I did bowl a strike. I, f- I finally kind of figured it out. Then you switched it up to golf. Well, no, because you were like, this fucking sucks. I'm done. And you sat on the couch. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, what about golf? And you're like, okay, I'll try golf. And I kind of figured since. You know, I I don't know what I'm doing in golf. I I played Wii Golf a bunch when I was younger and um I've gone to driving ranges here and there and I've definitely played my share of putt putt. But I was like, all right. So you basically and I was trying to explain it to Jeff, you hold the controller like you would a club. So just imagine this part of the club here is the is or the, of the controller, that's the face. And like I was trying to explain cuz you can also do practice swings cuz there's a little meter and if your if your wrist turns one way or the other, it'll be like whoop whoop whoop, and it'll it'll be like a like a wilting boner. So it'll be like, oh, you sliced it, or you <laughs> like. So I was I was trying to explain all that, and then Jeff starts hitting the golf ball like he's still playing bowling. I was like, you literally just hold it like it's an actual club, and that's how you swing. And Jeff is facing the TV and just going, ugh, hey, with one hand. I'm like, is that how you golf in real life? Is when when you go. Because we would definitely have to film some video at Top Golf and watch Jeff just do like a one-handed, um, uh, Happy Gilmore swing. I don't know. You're still you're still swinging it towards the the TV, right? Yeah, but when you like, golf why do I in have real to life, get into like a, a side stance. I understand how to golf and or I don't understand. I'm not good at it, but like I get. I get the the swinging motion and, and and lining up a ball, but like you're asking why you if, have to I, stand if I'm like swinging you're... towards a TV. Like why do I have to like? Because that's how they programmed the game. They programmed the game to like track the motion controller if you're holding sure. it like an actual golf club. So you were like just whipping it one handed, facing the TV, and your ball was going all over the place. And you're like, oh, this game fucking sucks. Yeah, no, I was clearly doing something wrong. Um, it's definitely <laughs> some user error, but I don't know. Did but you it feel, can't I feel be like swing. My, it's not, it's not the swing though. It's no, not the way no, you it's, it. My issue is is 
is the foot placement. Like, do I have to really like look like I'm swing? Like, as long as the motion's straightforward, I feel like that should be good enough. So wait, were you embarrassed uh, I mean, to stand like you were actually golfing to play motion golf? Yeah, I didn't feel like standing, <laughs> and it just wasn't working for me. I thought I was doing what you were doing, and it wasn't, and it wasn't hitting the ball. So then I went <laughs> with the bowling approach, where I just like stand straight forward and 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 swing the club and still like i'd at least make contact but it would just fucking slice it like 30 30 yards out of bounds so i didn't complete a hole and i don't think i and i and i and i got eliminated from the bowling tournament in the first round both times we played yeah let me tell you it didn't get much better in in Catan either (laughs) <laughs> uh i want to hear about this how the fuck did you get jeff to play Catan? well there is a little bit of lead up to that as well i mean we did discuss it on the show I, I threw it out there after you know carl and i played it for the first time and i was like all right that was fun i see why that's a very popular game jeff admitted he's into board games so i was like all right we'll fucking swing by let's do a Catan night so i had the idea that ever since you know, myself and Carl and her friend went to this German restaurant down the street because after we did an episode of Crafter Jeff, somebody was like, oh, I'm making Spetzel. It's like a German pasta. And they made these like, you know, little globules of pasta meat and then kind of almost like stir fry- fried it in butter or something. I was like, man, I-, I bet you my heart is looking at that trembling, but I think that looks fucking delicious. Found a place nearby that had it. We tried it out. Restaurant was fucking awesome. Had a great vibe. Food was great. It was fun. And I was like, you know, now that we're going to have a group with us, let's let's just pregame a little at the German place, get some food, and then we'll come back and play Catan. And being that it is a true German restaurant, they're in the full swing of Oktoberfest. So once it's past 6 p.m., they're no longer serving bottles of beer or like a little glass of beer. They're serving yeah. liters of beer, you right? Have to drink like a fucking maniac. You have to get an enormous mug or you have to get a Das Boot. And before going into this, I was like, it would be fun to have just a fucking giant boot full of beer. I was like, I'll order it and we'll kind of use that as a pitcher. You know, we'll just pour the boot into everyone's glasses and we'll just have like a fun gimmicky pitcher. But I didn't want to look like a puskus in front of jeff so jeff and i each ordered our own individual das boot and did either of you chug it successfully without spilling i don't think there's a human on earth that could i I would say there are very few humans on earth who can just straight up chug a boot in one go like they do in beer fest because it yeah, when we when we first got when those boots came out and I looked at it and I was like, well, this is intimidating. I did try and take ch- take like my first drink. I was like, I'm just gonna do a big chug, and when I put the boot back down, the water level did not fucking drop at all, and I was like, oh, I am in deep shit. This is trouble. I will say, Jeff Clark put in a very impressive performance. So. Not only did Jeff get a darker beer with a higher alcohol percentage than I did, Jeff got the beer basically down to the heel before even breaking the seal. Like yeah. I think I had to it was piss. a vintage Jeff Clark drinking performance, something I haven't done in years. <laughs> I had to like I think I had to piss like three or four times before finishing the boot. But we did finish. Yeah, but once I broke the seal though, I was I was peeing pretty regularly. Yeah. I mean, just like Steph's friend, like when those beers came out, she was like, all right, now imagine all of that volume is just instantly inside of you. Like, look at how big that is. That's all going to be inside you. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's, that is a lot. Damn right. That is a lot. That's a lot of fucking beer. When in Germany, you know, do as the Germans do. (laughs) Yeah. And like the, when the waiter brought them out, he was like, have you guys ever ordered a boot here before? And we're like, no. And he was like, all right, well, just a couple couple things. Be careful with them because 
these aren't as sturdy as they look. And a lot of times when people cheers them, they break. And if you break a boot, it is a $50 charge. I was like, oh boy. Okay. I am going to be very, very delicate with this boot. Because not only do I want to not pay $50, I don't want this thing to break and then have, have all that broken glass and beer get all over me. And then we were trying to figure out, because Jeff and I are both familiar with the movie Beer Fest. And like you said, Shuddy, in the movie, when they're basically doing flip cup, but with giant boots, they're chugging like crazy. And then when it reaches a certain level, you have to turn the boot so the air bubble doesn't blast all that liquid in your face out of nowhere. So I think we found out that the way to do it when you're not chugging it like you are about to kill yourself with alcohol poisoning, you keep the toe of the boot pointed towards you. So at, when it gets to that point, there's like a reservoir of beer that stays in the foot. Yep. Toes in. And I got quite toasty. Yeah, had a sweet little buzz going. Um, yeah, two liters of beer. Didn't we... Calculated to like, it's like six beers. I think it's like six pints. Yeah. Which again, it's not like, like if you were hanging out and you're like, oh man, last night I had six pints at the bar. It's not like, it's not like, whoa, we got a badass over here. Yeah. But just, just the fact that you're seeing it all together at once and you're basically like you drink way faster when it's in one glass. So like you have to, cause it's going to get warm. Yeah. And we I mean, Jeff definitely killed his first, but once you get past the calf and the glass starts getting a little skinnier, then it starts really cruising. So we yeah. that was how we started our night, with Wii Sports and a DOS boot and some and I had, uh, wiener schnitzel. I had wiener sh- yeah, I had some wiener schnitzel for the first time. I think it was the first <laughs> time, and it was really good. What did you have, Kevin? I also had the Wiener Schnitzel. Jeff had pork I and am chicken. A big fan of Wiener Schnitzel. Oh, I mean, it's so simple but so fucking delicious. And thank you for giving me that soundbite where I can cut out the schnitzel. Oh fuck you! God <laughs> damn it! God damn it! All the uh, all the at the start around Oktoberfest always sells um, pork schnitzel. Wiener schnitzel and spatzel. So that's a a fun time of year. Like I always snatch it up as soon as I see it. Yeah, I mean it was fucking delicious. The beer was great. Um they had again, they had live music. They had some some dude in Lederhosen playing the accordion. Did you guys get red cabbage? Carl did, yeah. That was terrible. <laughs> I tried some of it. Not I was not a fan. And she wasn't a fan either. She didn't eat. Any of it, really. Wait a second. Is cabbage a vegetable? Oh, I, oh, I know it's a vegetable. <laughs> um, but yeah, then, then, Shuddy, we made our way back to fire up Catan. So there was some smoking done. A boot was consumed. And then it's like, all right, Jeff, tr- time to learn a fairly complicated board game. And... I would a little say, bit more than fairly complicated. A lot more bit than fairly complicated. <laughs> so even after... So I tried to do the same thing that we did when I learned how to play it, and that's by putting on a YouTube video of a Catan Virgin to basically spell it out for you. So we had the board set up. We were trying to, like... Since it was three people that have played it and one person who's never played it, I feel like the best, the the easiest way for me to learn a board game is to like have somebody explain it to me real quick, and then we start playing. You explain it to me as we go, and I'm like, okay, it's all making sense now. I'm like, I'm a hands-on learner, so I kind of figured maybe we could do a combo of that. Like, yeah, just just sit through this nerd blabbing about what's happening here, and then when we start playing it, you pick up on it quick. And I think, so spoiler alert: Jeff hated it. I fucking hated it. I don't know that that's a spoiler alert at all. I feel like almost anybody could have foreseen <laughs> that coming. I feel like I did a pretty, pretty good job of masking it. Like I did, I did outward, 
say I didn't, I, I didn't like it, but I was laughing throughout the game and, you know, participating, trying to make the best out of it. But I had no idea the fucking rules. And and I was just laughing at, like, how confusing it was and how, like, confident Kevin and, and, and Carl were that they were making sense and explaining it correctly, which they may have been. And I was probably just being a dumbass, but I I couldn't figure it out. I still have no idea how to buy settlements or cities or anything like that. I have no idea. But you did it. You pulled it off. You bought you bought settlements and cities. I did, but Many I don't. Of them. But it was pretty easy to buy settlements and cities halfway through the game, and then towards the back half, I kept on like not doing it, going about it the right way, and I would try to fucking. I would be collecting these goddamn cards, trying to make moves and build a goddamn metropolis, and then I would be like turned down for whatever reason. Like you can't, you can't build that here. Or you yeah, because it was too close to other settlements. Whatever, I'm moving on your turf, bro. Whatever. <laughs> Fuck you, Catan. Give me your shit. Yeah, the the one thing there's not fighting in Catan, right? There's no, at least not in the regular version. There's like twelve expansion packs or some shit. So it's not like Risk where you get some close to somebody else's territory and you can take it over. You're just supposed to live hospitably and not encroach on other people's turf. Kind of, yeah. Once you have a settlement, you can't take over someone else's settlement. Once something is built, you can't destroy it or anything. Maybe I'm just too American for my brain to comprehend. (laughs) I mean, to be fair... You did drink a boot and then smoke weed and then try to learn how to play Catan. That's right. I had an IPA as well. But yeah, I, I had no idea what was going on. I just tried not to ruin the game for other people and to, and to have, have fun. But uh, I will not be playing Catan again. And, and, and also, I'm, I'm still not 100% sure that we are doing everything absolutely correct by the book because if you look up how long does it take to play a game of Catan, a lot of times it says 45 minutes to an hour and we played for a couple hours. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't because like, you know. I feel like it was a three-hour game. It, it was, felt like a football game. It was long. It was long. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe there's something being done incorrectly that's making it take longer than it should. But I don't know. I enjoyed it, but I could tell I could even though you were doing your best to try and mask it, Jeff, I could tell you were you were miserable. And oh, <laughs> well, I really was. I, I was fucking miserable. I gotta collect fucking wheat. What the fuck? Lambs. Dude, I, got, I, I got lambs. You basically did nothing other than the German restaurant that entire time that Jeff found fun. I I did nothing. No, I'm saying Kevin like. Kevin's like, come over and hang out. We're going to go to the German restaurant and then everything else is going to suck for you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, and all I honesty, feel like that makes me a good friend. I, I put on a brave really face. I, I had a good time. You very easily, you very easily after dinner could have been like, you know what? I'm going to go home. But in yeah. my defense, though, I was not trying to troll Jeff. Like, I was like, it's, it's video games, but you get to play sports. Hmm? That seems... That seems like something that would be in your wheel, your wheelhouse. Oh, oh, you like board games? This one's super popular. We tried it out and had fun. Let's see if you like it, Jeff. It wasn't. I I, I was not trying to trick Jeff and into an, an evening of events that he would hate. I honestly thought that they 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 stood a fighting chance of being enjoyable. Yeah, and I mean, the German place was awesome. That was a lot of fun. The company was fun. You, you, uh, you, Carl and 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 Diana were uh, a good time to hang out with. So I can't. I don't know. What's the name of this German restaurant? It's like Rasselbach. Yeah, Rass- Rasselbach. Rasselbach Kitchen. They have one in uh, around the corner from Kevin's place in Culver City, and then there's one in Long Beach that I've been eyeing up for a while. They do a Wednesday trivia night. And the menu always looked good. I definitely want to do trivia. And it was just, it was pretty random that they have one in Long Beach and the only other locations, Kevin's Kevin's neck of the woods. Yeah. God fucking damn it. I would go to town on this menu. 
Well, you got to come out to L.A. more, man. There's there's lots of good shit around here now. Like the Jaeger schnitzel? <laughs> hmm, I'd be all into that. Yeah, yeah I think uh, I think Carl's friend got that, right? I think so, yeah. With the mushroom sauce on it? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was fucking delicious. Um, yeah, German German food. Who would have thought? It's actually pretty good. I think the only enjoyment Jeff got out of the game portions of the night was the resources in Catan are like it's like lambs, um, brick, wheat, ore, and then wood. So every time Jeff needed wood, we were both like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Literally every time, and it was definitely yeah. It definitely got old to half of the room very quickly, but that did not stop us <laughs> from doing it over and over and over. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. <laughs> I laughed every time. I mean, I, I'm sure because I did. I did do on our our Patreon. I did uh, an episode of Kevin's Nerd Hole where I did play the Switch Sports. And people in the comments were like, damn, you got to compete against Jeff and find out who is better at sports. And, oh, yeah, totally, because that's what we're doing. And I knew I knew that, you know, Carl was going to be back soon, and that would mean that whatever we were doing would have to be cut off short so we could go to to the restaurant. So I didn't want to set everything up and record it. But, uh, goddamn, I have a feeling people would have been very entertained watching Jeff try to play switch sports and then try to play Catan. I wanted to throw the fucking controller. I was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, really was. I was pissed. I, I, with how many, with the, the people that enjoyed watching me swear under the sink on Friday afternoon, I have a feeling they would very much enjoy watching you do that. Yeah. Oh, you're, yeah. You're doing some fiction, fixing shit with Shuddy, which hasn't happened since the pandemic, <sighs> right? It was a disaster. It, it, I mean, I don't want to say it was a disaster because everything's fixed. Um, and uh, it was only, but I ended up before I could even start, I ended up having to make three trips to Lowe's uh, because I bought the garbage disposer, got home. Then the box said I needed plumber's putty, which I didn't buy while I was at Lowe's, so I ran to Lowe's to get back to Lowe's to get plumber's putty. Goddamn fucking plumber's putty! And then I got home and got ready to start and I bought a garbage disposal that had a plug attached to it, and the one in my house had to be hardwired. There was no outlet for it. Oh, so that probably so created a very angry putty boy. Oh, I was... I was... Yeah, I mean, I called my dad and I hung up on him because he gave me an answer that I didn't like. Like I was, I was furious. Like I ended up going back to Lowe's, getting it, coming home, smoking a bunch, eating lunch, relaxing for like an hour and a half, and then finally do it. But it took all of my day on Friday to replace the fucking garbage disposal. Well, you're our, you're our very own Bob Vila. But you you accomplished it? I accomplished it, and it works, and is not leaking, and has been problem-free since Friday. That's right. Now I'm the host of Tool Time. Arr, 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 arr. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah. That, I mean... You had a manlier weekend than, than myself and Jeff. Um... I guess. I mean, I just had to do one of the most emasculating things that a man can go through, and that's taking your car to a mechanic, which I feel like they always make me feel like I'm a giant pussy. Oh, yeah. They try to get over on you if you don't know anything. Yeah, my my car on Friday started, like, I, I heard this noise in the distance, and I thought that it was a siren, because I was in Hollywood, and I'm like, man, that siren's really going on for a long time. And I'm like, you know what? It has been going on so long, that is not a siren. What the fuck is happening here? So I turn my music off, and I hear it, and I'm like, ooh, sounds like someone's car sucks. Well, that's a bummer. And then I was like, oh, no, it's me. My car sucks. And it was doing this thing that was like, um, it was very squeaky, and it sounded like when you're windexing a window, and it does that wiki 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 that squeaky noise 
It sounded like that. So, of course, my stupid ass, I Google it. And um, a lot of think like a lot of the results were saying that it could be one of the belts, one of the numerous belts under the hood of a car. So I took it to this guy this morning. I was like, you know, I got to get this fucking fixed sooner than later because my my schedule is hectic and about to get even more hectic, and I can't have my car exploding. So I, I walk the guy. I'm telling the guy, and I sound like a fucking wiener because I'm like, yeah, it's all squeaky. It's like. And he's like, oh, cool noise. And he's like, all right, which car is yours? And I'm like, that one over there. And he's like, oh, a Chevy? Oh, well, that's your problem. And I was just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what, how, how are we fixing this? Now that, now, now that you're done roasting my car, what, uh, how do I give you money? Yeah, what's, what's the ideal car to get? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But turns out after driving, because like, the, the day after I first started hearing it, I got in my car because I had to run some errands, and I'm like, ah, shit, I hope, I hope this isn't the drive that makes my car explode. And then it wasn't fucking happening. And then the day after that, I had to drive to go see, I saw Terrifier 3, and on my way to and from the theater, there's that fucking <laughs> happening again. So I get to the dealership, and I'm like, the drive over there, it wasn't doing it. And I'm like, fuck me, fuck me. It's a, it's to do that thing because I actually had to take it to two places. The first place I took it to this morning, um, I was like, I was like, it might do it, it might not do it. And I turned the car on, and it wasn't making the noise. And he's like, oh, I don't hear it. And I'm like, well, you got me. That's what I like to do in my free time. I drive to mechanics and I, I hit them with imaginary problems. That's, that's my thing. You figured me out. But he was like, well, it's a hybrid, so it could be a hybrid problem. So go check this place out. But yeah, I always feel like like I'm such a wiener, like a man talking to another man who knows how to fix my car and I don't. And I feel like they they know how that power dynamic is. They're they're well aware of it too, and they use that to kind of act like they have a bigger schlong than me. And I don't like that. That bums me out. And I also just realized now that I put my car problems out on the internet. Here come all the uh here come all the uh, the experts in the comments. And then they're going to fight with each other. They're going to be like, no, no, that's not what that problem means. It actually means he needs a new Johnson rod. And they're like, you fucking idiot. He doesn't need a Johnson rod. He needs new blinker fluid. Yeah, dude, I'm a fucking mark when it comes to going to the mechanic. That, thank God my, my car, which kind of sucks, but I guess maybe doesn't because I don't ever really have to bring it in the mechanic. I mean, it's not that nice. It's definitely not a... I definitely could step up my um, my transportation game, but gets the job done. I don't drive that much, and again, I never go to the fucking mechanic. And it's a, I mean, it's a Honda Civic, so it's the easiest car to re- to replace things on. Yeah, I feel like they they always have parts on hand for Honda Civics. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, all you need to know about Honda Civics is how common they are that poor Hector got blamed for all the, the robberies in fast and furious because they drove around in, in Honda civics, just like Don and his crew, you know, way more about those movies than I do. Can't forget about that. (laughs) Well, uh, I did talk with Dominic over the weekend as well. My friend and yours, good old Dom. Uh, he was very, Happy to hear Anthony's Billy Bubblegut song played for the masses. And I believe he sent us in some some art, some Billy Bubblegut art. He did. I didn't forward that to you, did I? No, but so, you are you are the Zoom master. So if you so have them on I your do Zoom, need you can... to cue that. Well, in the meantime, we'll play a little of it. What? No, I'm here already. Bubble guts. Sometimes he gets in the gurgles. He runs really fast to the toilet. Billy farts on people when he gets bubble guts. He makes them squirm as they jump on his farts. Once he ate baked beans and had a gas attack like Granny, and he always gets bubble guts. He traps his fart in a jar and lets it out in someone's face. Billy farts on people when he gets bubble guts. He makes them squirm as they jump on his farts. 
All right, that's enough. Uh, right, here are the here are the drawings of Billy Bubbleguts, one made by Dom Sun. And Shetty's opening that attachment right now. <laughs> Uh, I love when things are labeled in kids' drawings, too. Like, the poop, just labeled as poop. There's a jar that he's farting in. It looks like a magnificent fart that's being blasted into it. Like, My only question about this drawing is, who does that turd belong to? Did that come from Billy Bubbleguts while he was farting in the jar? Or <laughs> did the person who's... Looks like they're dead based on the X's for eyeballs. Yeah, I see that. Uh, did did they shit themselves and then keel over? Well, there is that old uh, rumor that when you die, you do shit your pants. So maybe the fart I, from Billy I, Bubble. That's, that's not a. That's not a rumor that uh, that does happen. So like if if Billy Bubbleguts farted so bad that it killed that man, he could have fallen on his ass and that poop fell out. That is very. Yeah, that's exactly correct. Yes, and I do enjoy that Billy Bubbleguts has the body type of an acoustic guitar. Um, and we do have to examine the genitals. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that I, I think I. Those I'm going to go out. No, I. What I think that is is butt cheeks. I think that's his butt. There's a turd coming out of his butt, so that must be Billy <laughs> Bubblegut's poop. Uh, so that's not genitalia. I think that's butt cheeks and a poop. So uh, Billy Bubbleguts is either a eunuch or has no genitalia in general. See, I was seeing that as Billy Bubbleguts has horribly deformed and disfigured genitalia. So he has, you know... A normal a normal man will have penis then balls, but Billy Bubbleguts has balls and then a very very dark penis behind it. But who knows? Uh, I'm, I um I'm going to say that Anthony at his age was not drawing a cock and balls, but he is drawing a a prairie dogging buttocks. <laughs> I, I, most people would argue that that's better <laughs> I, and Billy Bubbleguts has very interesting um, hands and feet he's got curly hair and I, I guess that's a tongue hanging out of his mouth and green armpit hair or armpit stench coming off of him <laughs> as we see here I mean that is magnificent That is a, that is a great drawing but not to be outdone by Anthony Dom brought his Billy Bubbleguts energy also. By the way, if you would like to see these um, as we comment it, uh, comment on them, youtube.com slash mad scientist party hour. I mean, this is just magnificent. And wow, Dom and his son draw like feet very similarly. So Billy Bubbleguts in Dom's drawing, he kind of has the body type of E.T. And... His feet seem to be facing each other doing the Mr. Burns like, excellent. Uh, see, I did not catch that uh, until just now. I thought his legs were just shoes. Oh, okay. But that's exactly what it is doing. Like, that's his kneecaps. <laughs> like yeah. Those little... Uh, yeah. Oh, and now that you've zoomed in, I, I didn't notice before that he has boogers pouring out of his nostrils. Yeah, boogers. His eyes are eyes and hair are green. Uh, he eats baked beans. Oh, yeah, because then he farts like Granny, according to the song. Uh, and he's got a water bottle. Well, you got to stay hydrated. If you do that much farting, it'll, it'll dehydrate you. <laughs> it's a camelback. He's a well-hydrated young man. That Billy Bubble got uh, something like that. And as we were discussing just a little bit of fun here uh, for everybody, I did pitch our match idea involving Billy Bubbleguts, and the commish said that that's an excellent idea. Hell yeah. I mean, anytime there's a new character introduced into the MSPH universe, uh, excuse me, Pooniverse, uh, they 
there has to be some way to incorporate them into an MSPH wrestling event. And I feel like our, our, our new approach to MSPH wrestling worked out really well. I feel like we put the horse before the cart. No, we did it the right way. Whichever the right way is, we did it that way. We came up with the, a- the cart behind the horse or the horse in front of the cart is the right way. Whichever one gets us back down to earth. I, I we did that. We did <laughs> nope. that one. No nope. shit. Nope, Kevin. Nope. My name Cook. <laughs> God damn it. Oops. I Oops. think you're killing it. I think you're nailing it. I agree with Jeff. <laughs> I'm I'm following along with everything you're saying. I'm not confused at all. Yeah, I I feel like the last MSPH wrestling event we did was so like themed towards stuff happening on the show inside jokes from the show and it was a really really fun event i loved the last msph wrestling um so i'm glad billy bubble guts got introduced before we do the next one because how can you not have billy bubble guts be an entrant in msph wrestling um billy bubble guts might be uh the single most importantly important thing to happen in all of media in the last 20 years I agree. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't think that's hyperbole at all either. <laughs> also, was it during last week's main show or the Patreon where we came up with a new mascot for a Utah sports team? I think, uh, that, I think was... that was last week. Yeah, but was that Patreon or main show? Ooh. I think that was main show. Well, I feel like... um what was it? What was his name? The, the Utah Hyman. Something. No, it was like Grizzlack Hyman or oh, something. Oh yeah, Grizz, Grizzco, Grizzco the yeah. the Hyman. Yeah, Grizz, yeah Grizzco Grizz. the Hyman. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. That call. could be that could be a very tough character to incorporate into MSPH wrestling. But why don't you write his name up top so we never forget it again? Okay. I would also like to stuff this in a poster tube to go out to one lucky Puminati member who buys a, a poster but i also did promote it on my facebook page so like family and friends who don't listen to the podcast have been ordering them and so someone could just get a random chris go to hyman drawing yeah be like what the actual fuck is this chris co oh no no now i don't know how to spell hyman h-y-m-a-n chris co the hyman there he is all right. Well, uh, Dom also was asking if any Puminati would like to participate and make their own drawings of Billy Bubbleguts. Now, you don't have to look at the examples that Dom and his son have made. You can just go off of whatever popped into your head when you first heard the song. And he wants to incorporate Puminati drawings that are sent in to make a Billy Bubbleguts music video. So I guess the best way to do that it would be to make your drawings and email them to the what the fuck email address, right? Oh, uh, I guess. I mean, you know how this goes. Every time we ask like, hey, you guys want to participate? Like one person's like, I'll participate. So you're not going to get like flooded well, with emails. No, no, I. it's not that. I, I would love to be flooded with emails. It's that when I made this email address, it's so f- fucking stupid and long uh that we almost never get emails it's wtf did i just watch msph at gmail.com it's just very convoluted that's that's all i don't think you know Uh, i don't think it's it's that bad i think you're being too hard on yourself shuddy or uh you could um send it to our instagram at wtf msph yeah which is what uh the email address should have been. But if you guys would like um, to participate, we're not looking for, you know, some fucking famous artist. You don't have to be Michelangelo or any other Ninja Turtle to participate. I would say almost the crappier, the funnier. Maybe I'll take a stab. I'll contribute. So at least we have one, one person that will send in a drawing. <laughs> and it's just Anthony's doms and yours, your picture just cycling through for two minutes. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, well, I think before we get into some um, movie reviews, perhaps we should get into our newest weekly segment, NFL Pick Them! God, I love that intro. It's some of the best work we've ever done. Yeah, it really is great, Coach. <laughs> Uh, so week six ended, well, we'll end tonight after the Monday night game, but we picked five games last week, all with winning record. We all ended with winning records. What? Uh, we all ended three and two. No way. We all got the same score? Uh, yeah, because we picked enough different games that with us losing certain ones, uh, we all picked. Weird. We all tied. Weird. So, uh, between the New Orleans Taints and the Kansas City Queefs, you and Jeff took the Queefs. You guys were correct. Oh, Queefs beat Taints? Queefs beat Taints. That's like uh, rock, Queef, Taint, shoot. Uh-oh. Uh, Queef beats Taint. Queef beats Taint. The San Francisco 69ers. Yeah. Uh, won over the Seattle Seacocks. Which one did I Jeff take? Pick, you took the Seahawks. You and I both did. Jeff took the 69ers. So that means Jeff yep. won? Yep. Shit. Well, one of my two winners this week in, in the contest so far. Not in this uh, one. The Cleveland Brown Eyes uh, lost to the Philadelphia Spread Eagles. You and Jeff both took the Brown Eyes. Oh, no. How stupid of us. It wasn't that stupid because the Eagles only won by four fucking points. It so did that beat the not... spread, Jeff? No, the Good. spread was nine and a half. Oh, yeah, they didn't cover the spread. My mistake. Yeah. Okay. So if you picked the Browns and the spread, you guys would have won money. Well, I did that. So can I have money? Nope. No, no, we're doing money line. We're doing straight up. We're not doing against the spread, buddy. Yeah, farts. All right, what happened next? Uh, then the Detroit Lions put on a complete and utter embarrassment of the Dallas Cowboys, beating them 49-10 to 10 at home. Oh, wait, okay. did, did I pick that one? What did I pick? I don't remember who we I picked. picked the Lions. We all, we all did? Picked oh the Lions. We all did. Man, we're so um, fucking smart. It was so bad that at the end of, near the end of the game, the Detroit Lions played a trick play that passed the ball to an offensive lineman <gasps> who ended up almost scoring a touchdown. No way. Yeah. Uh, the Cowboys got that's throttled, cool. and it was fantastic to to find out about. Yeah, that's it was awesome. glorious. And then the Cincinnati Bungholes uh, beat the New York Giant Pussies. Yeah, and it was a fucking terrible game to watch. Uh, it was almost an awesome game for me financially, but the uh, Giants pulled an ATS loss out of the fucking jaws of victory and somehow found a way to not cover that game. I I, am, I almost threw my computer off my fucking balcony. Football, <laughs> football is pissing me off so much. I've gotten so many bad beats this year, and... My two picks to win offensive bets to win offensive and defensive player of the year turned out to be the favorites, and they have one suffered a season-ending injury last week, and then the other is on IR. Talking about Aiden Hutchinson, who supposedly the the Kevin it was it was an injury so bad they didn't even want to show it on TV. I guess he snapped his fucking leg. Like, yeah, he I, snapped his tibia. I saw I like, saw hey. headlines even even. No sports ball. Kevin saw headlines about that, and I was like, mm, "Yeah, I don't think I can click it." Because yeah, it was, it was like one of those things where the other team was on a knee, like kind of in tears. Like that's when you know an injury is bad. Is when the other team's like, "Oh fuck, this is yeah. bad news." I mean, I don't like it sometimes when I'm just like <clears throat> scrolling social media. I'll see some clip from an MMA event where someone like kicks someone's leg. And there, the the kicker's leg just fucking does like you know like those snap bracelets from when we were kids. Their fucking yep. bone just like vaporizes and wraps around the other person's leg. Just like, 
I felt that I've been in my butthole and I will never, I will not be pooping today. So I've been watching just to, to stay on the same thing. I've been watching heels, uh, the star show, but it's on Netflix now. And in one of the episodes, uh, one of the wrestlers doing a submission move to a guy he's mad at snaps his fucking tibia. And like, I almost fucking vomited. Like it is like even bone breaking in movies for some reason when it's very graphic and it turns my stomach. Well, wait till uh, I, start, like, I start talking about terrifier. Um, but so that puts through week six, Kevin in the lead at 19 and 15. Yes. I am a genius. Um, so do we Jeff, have to pick new ones? Yeah, we will. Uh, I am in second place at 17 and 18, one game south of 500. Jeff well. is uh, 15 and 20 for the season so far. Jeff, five games behind 500. Oh my god. So Are Kevin, you've got you've got a two game lead on me, four game lead on Jeff. Okay. So now For we have to go week, ahead and pick them. Yep. The Buffalo Wild Bills. Let's fucking pick uh, them. Uh versus the New York Jets. Hmm. The Buffalo Bills versus Benny and the Jets. Benny and the Jets. You know what? I feel like the Jets normally play poopy, but this is going to be their week. So I take the Jets. They're going to kick Buffalo Bill right in his fucking tucked mangina. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. Uh, This is the last of my five picks for the Circa Million football contest, and I went with the Bills. I think the Bills just butt fuck the Jets tonight. I I think I also think the Bills are going to kick the shit out of the the Jets. But well, I feel stupid. Jets fired Robert Saleh and Nathaniel Hackett had play calling duties stripped from him, so they may they may get get that burst that teams seem to get when a change like that happens. So Kevin, you Shady might not be boom, far off. Now. They call that the dead cat bounce, Kevin. I the first that. game, the first game after you fire your coach, the dead cat bounce. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I mean, I incorporated that into my pick. Then, all right, then, uh, Jeff, you can pick first for the Denver Broncos versus the New Orleans Taints. I'll. I'll I hate this game. This is like one of the few football games. Primetime football games, I'm not even excited to see. I mean, to say I won't watch, it's a lie, but I'm not pumped for this one at all. I'll just go with the Broncos and the Sean Payton revenge game, even though I hate both fucking teams. Kevin? Well, I am basing well, this on, on nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm basing this nothing on nothing other than the fact that I just love New Orleans. So I think the Taints are going to beat the OJ's White Broncos. I also agree with you, Kevin. Yes. I'm or I agree with one. you. I'm picking the Saints over the uh, Broncos. Next, we've mm-hmm. got the Cleveland Brown Eyes hosting the Cincinnati Bungholes. Ooh. I'm going to take the Bengals. A matchup for um, perfect joke synergy. The Bungholes and the Browns. Well, I feel like even the shitty teams get a couple wins per season, right? So I'm going to stick with the Brown stains. Yeah. Well, the Browns already might have won their game of the year. Uh, well, they, they I, already have one win. I predict they'll get at least two, and this is this is the second one. This is their number two. Uh, I'm taking the Bengals, uh, if I didn't say that already. Jeff? Uh, I'm rolling with Kevin, both – both me and him picked the Browns to make it to the Super Bowl in, in the beginning of the season. And this is an absolute must win. This, If they don't win this one, the season's pretty much over. They're 
going to get Nick Chubb back. Um, Bengals are a pre or a uh, division rival. We we need this one, Kevin. I agree. We really need it, and it's going to happen because of, of that need. All right, uh, Kevin, you're the only one that's going to get a pick this game because uh, I I know who I'm picking. I assume I can guess who Jeff's going to pick. Uh, yep. The Philadelphia Spread Eagles against the New York Giant Pussies. Yeah, what do you do here? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you can't take that stance of not picking your friend's teams anymore in this particular game. You have to pick one. I have to insult one of like you. Who do you like more? Yeah. Well, I feel like Jeff is always complaining about how bad the Giants are. So I almost have to just yeah. play to win and take the Eagles. I like that uh, yeah, logic. Like you, like you said, you know who I'm going with. I'm obligated to go with this one, especially because we're on the podcast together. But Eagles it's should a win. home. It's a home game for the Giants. The Eagles do not look like a good team. They look like a mediocre team at best. Yeah, yeah, you guys look like shit. We should be. We should. It should be a this coin game, flip game towards the end. We'll see. That. Yeah, this game is going to be a close game that is not going to be fun to watch. Uh, that's where we would end because that's the Sunday primetime game. But I didn't want to only pick four. I've added two, and these are both. These both should be coin flip games. One's wait a second. Too bad. What? The Steeler, I thought the Steelers Jets is the Sunday night football game. Pretty sure that's the Sunday night football game. Hold on. What did I do? Let me look. I got to bow out of this one. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Sorry, I Steelers can't, I can't Jets. Help you guys. You got you got family ties to both. No. Oh. I don't have Fair. any family ties to the the Steelers. They're just the team I, I pretended to like when I was a poser. All right, I thought your family oh, somehow knew the right. Maras. Oh, wait. Steelers, they Jets. Do. The Maras own the, the Steelers? I think they're related through marriage. I thought they own the Giants. They do. They own two teams? Isn't Rooney... I think Rooney Mara is both a Mara, a Mara and a Rooney. And the Roonies own the Steelers. Oh yeah, and no, the mayor is own Rooney mayor. I'll look this up. Anyways, my, my but grand- the Rooners, the Roonies don't own Ro- or the Maras don't own Rooney Mara, Jeff. Excuse, I own the Giants. Is what I meant to say. My my grandma is friends with her grandma, although I have no fucking idea how. Anyways, yeah, what are we picking? What are we picking then? All right, well, I wanted to. Pick, we're gonna pick these two games anyway. And we'll pick the Steelers Jets. Um, but the Las Vegas Raiders against the Los Angeles Rams, two bottom of the basement teams. Coin well, flip game. In that case, I'll just stick with I'll stick local. I'll do LA. Jeff, it. I'm going Rams too. I'm taking the Raiders. Kevin, there's gonna be more Raiders fans at this game than Rams fans. Because the, the Raiders used to play in L.A. and they have a much bigger fan base still in L.A. despite them not being here for uh, close to 30 years. The, yeah, 30 it's years the, roughly. It's the Panty Raiders versus the Ram Mans. Beautiful. Right, Shuddy? How yep. happy you just Kevin-fied that. <laughs> uh, and then in a battle of two top-of-the-table teams, the Detroit Lions versus the Minnesota Vikings. Mm. Wow. I'm going Vikings. Wow. I'm going Detroit Lions. I think. I think I'm going to go with the Vikings. My aunt, Laura, I think is a huge Vikings fan for some reason. Bucking the family have, obligation to be a Jets fan. I have the potential to uh, go one game ahead of you, Kevin, if I run the table. Shit. Well, game theory. I love it. Well, prepare, Shuddy, because I'm going to poop in your mouth. Jeff can close 
a two two of the four games or two of the four games he is behind you if he runs the table what happens if i run the table then you guys uh, are going to talk about that Fucked. If, if you run the table uh you'll have a five game lead over me and a seven game lead over jeff hmm Hmm. Okay. Well, so there. This is the first week that there could be. Oh, we're not done yet. Uh, Steeler, New York Jets versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, we didn't do that one. I'm taking the Steelers. Same. I'll go with the Jets since I'm picking against them this week, and Justin Fields can't throw or shit. I hate that guy. Always throwing the ball yeah. and it hits the fucking floor. An idiot. Pretty much. We sometimes them, so. sometimes he gets confused and he kicks it. And he's like, oh, I meant to throw it. He's such a jerk off that he, guy. He, Might he, as well. Well, <laughs> well he, you did pick him to win. Ah, oh, fuck. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he's, he's the Steelers quarterback. The Steelers. quarterback. Well, all of his, like, stupidity, it's going to somehow work in their favor. You'll see. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> All right, are we done picking That's them? That's it. We we're, them? we're done picking. We're done. We picked them. Fuck yeah. Another week where we successfully picked them. Kong kong. Uh, I did manage to catch a couple new movies in this past week, gentlemen. Um, I'll start with the lesser known one. Shuddy, did you know that a new Hellboy movie came out? What? Yeah, dude. So with David Harbor? No. With Jack Kessie? I think his name is. Hellboy the Crooked Man? Yeah. So What the fuck? I sort of discovered Hellboy comics when I was living with Brandano when we were roommates back in the day, and he had a whole bunch of Hellboy comics and I started reading them and I was like, "Oh my god, this is so my shit. It's creepy." The artwork is cool, and like the more I read it, the more I loved it, and then I became obsessed, and Hellboy comics are just my favorite. So I, I do really enjoy the Guillermo del Toro Hellboy movies. I think uh, Ron Perlman was just... Some people, they just take a role, and you're like, wow, were you put on this planet just to do that? Like Heath Ledger playing the Joker was like, how could anybody play a Joker that fucking well? And he was just a, a great Hellboy, but... Those movies didn't feel like the comics as much as I enjoyed them. It was just like some other take on Hellboy. And I was like, yeah, this is fun. I'm in. This new one, which just flew under the radar, I don't even think it showed in any theaters in America. I think it had a limited release overseas. And then here, it just went straight to digital. Um, and I, I follow Mike Mignola, the, the creator of Hellboy, on all the socials. So I've been seeing a little bit of the fanfare leading up to this and it didn't really get good reviews. Um, yeah, it's not looking so pretty on, uh, the aggregate sites. Yeah. So I was just like, you know what? Fuck them. Uh, I want to support any Hellboy project that I can. So I also had a few digital credits on my prime account. So, you know, Carl and I were looking for something to watch. She's not familiar with Hellboy, but she knows I'm obsessed. And she's like, yeah, fucking, Let's, let's put it on. And while the flaws are obvious, they clearly did not have the budget to pull off everything that they were trying to pull off. Um, but I've this is easily the closest to the Hellboy comics that a movie's ever come. The, the cro- really? The Crooked Man arc is one of... It's like a fan favorite. It's one of my favorite Hellboy stories. It's a really beloved one. It's pretty creepy. It's kind of, you know, it's small and contained. It takes place in the woods. And I will say this. uh, I don't think it is going to have mass appeal. Um, But I was able to look past. It it really felt like a fan film. It, it, It felt like a lot of talented nerds got together, pooled a little bit of cash, called in some favors, and made a Hellboy fan film. And if you watch it through that lens... It's it's kind of entertaining. 
How can you watch it through that lens, though, when it had a twenty million dollar budget? I know, I know. I, I saw that afterwards, and I was like, I was like, where did that twenty million go? Because it does not look like a twenty million dollar movie. There, are, there are some special effects where you're like, oh, that's cool. I, I bought that. That was good. And then there's some special effects where I was like, hey, what? But even Carl, who has no loyalty to Hellboy, has never read a comic, never seen a movie, she at the end of it was like. That was actually fun. It was creepy. I I enjoyed it. And do you think she would like the Ron Perlman Hellboys, Hellboy and Hellboy and the Golden Compass or whatever it's called? I, I think she the Golden Army. Yeah, I feel like the second Hellboy movie felt very uh, Lord of the Ringsy. Um, and she actually kind of digs Lord of the Rings, so that's got a, a fighting chance. And then the first one's kind of just like fun and goofy, so I think she could enjoy them. I think out of anything, if I could ever twist her arm into reading a Hellboy comic, I think she would fucking love it because they're I mean, so dark. I, I, you got me that library edition of the first two trades that was it's phenomenal. Fucking, it's sick, right? It's so good. It's so good. Like Hellboy fighting like satanic supernatural stuff, and at the same time Nazis. It's like, oh well, this is this is all very satisfying. But I don't know. I, I would say if you're not a fan of Hellboy, this is probably a movie with an uphill battle. But Carl and I both both dug it, and we're willing to look past its flaws. And like, and some of the some of the actors in it were quite poopy. I, I feel. A little bad saying that, but there's no way of getting around it. I feel yeah, like you can't shoot inside the tent, buddy. I know, but like some of it was awesome. I I enjoyed Jack Kessie as Hellboy, and I think it's a shame that it didn't get a bigger budget to do what it really wanted because it was really on the right track. It was fucking spooky. It was scaled down. It was contained. A lot of Hellboy comics are just these three issue one off stories where he just goes off and battles some creepy thing in Bavaria in like nineteen fifty. Um and this this had that vibe. It was fucking cool. It just it's just kind of a bummer that the only way to watch it is to purchase it. There's no rentals, you just have to spend twenty bucks and buy it. Which is also kind of a bummer because I think that's not the biggest way to make your money back. I mean, twenty million dollars. If you're making that back twenty bucks at a time on streaming for something that didn't really get much press, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna take a lot. Yep. But uh I also saw Terrifier three. Did which... you have you seen the other Terrifiers? Yes, I have. Okay. I started after Terrifier Two was already out. Because people were like, these movies are fucked. Like, absolutely fucked. And they're like, you know, it's made by this guy who was a practical effects dude. And he, this is his passion project. And he did the practical effects for it. So they look, they look really, really good and realistic and gross. And I was like, okay. A, like an ultra fucked up slasher movie. Ultra violence. Practical effects. Fuck yeah. Sign me up. And they are brutal. Utterly, utterly fucking brutal. Dude, my brothers went and saw a Terrifier 2 and 3 double feature, I told you last week. Just Terrifier, probably fucking showering in blood. Dude, it is, it's crazy. Like, I love horror movies. I love violence in movies. I love practical stuff even more, just because it's so impressive. And I think... A good practical effect looks way more real than a good CG effect any day. Oh, well, of course. And Jesus Christ, like the first Terrifier movie has this kill that is just fucking nasty. Like they're all nasty. They're all way over the top and upsetting and bloody. <laughs> and there's like 50 st- – like it's not like a like a Jason movie where someone gets like whacked with a machete or their head gets chopped off or they're stabbed through the chest and pinned to the wall – these are like, once Art the Clown, the bad guy in the Terrifier movies, starts killing somebody, you got to just like sit back and be like, all right, we're going to be here a while. Because he will like snap bones, chew, chew a finger off, and then just like, all right, now I'm going to get into the kill. 
Like, there's a kill in Terrifier 2 that goes on for so fucking long. He is just torturing this girl in her bedroom. And then he leaves, and you're like, oh my god, thank god it's over. And then the fucking guy comes back in with, like, a thing of Morton salt and starts dumping salt on her. And you're like, oh, no! <laughs> And he's like dumping bleach on her, like, oh my God. And the, the, I think the thing that makes the kills and Terrifier movies so upsetting is the fact that if you did this to a person in real life, they would 80% be dead. And at the very least, they would pass out due to shock or something. But people getting killed in Terrifier movies survive way longer than anyone would in real life, and they're still screaming, so it's just like, oh my god, this is so uncomfortable. And Terrifier 3 does not disappoint. It is absolutely fucking brutal. There are so many kills. The kills go on for so long. The practical effects are so good and believable. And it outperformed Joker. Like, a... A big budget, you know, technically comic book movie in its second week got beat by an ultra violent indie horror film with a $20 million budget. Yeah. So, ter- okay, here's a great question. Or well, wait, actually, I don't know what question. the budget was for Terrifier 3. $20 million. Oh, it had the same budget as Hellboy? Yeah. I, cause I saw something that, uh, just before it came out that a $20 million movie was going to beat a $200, $200 million movie at the box office this weekend. Gotcha. So Hellboy's $20 million budget versus Terrifier's budget, which movie looked like they made best use of the funds? I mean, Terrifier. Like, ter- so Terrifier, like there was not any issues that, made it look like a fan film no i i because I, I would say the first two terrifiers the first one was made for thirty five thousand, which is just fucking crazy when you see what they pulled off in that first one um bigger budget for the second one but still pretty low i would say the first two terrifier movies definitely feel like straight to vhs b movies oh and this one minus what my mistake. The budget for Terrifier three was two million. Oh, yeah. I mean, two million dollars with most of it probably going to practical effects. You're gonna see some shit. But it looked better than the twenty million dollar movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, because that's we Dom and I watched Kill Her Goats last week for what the fuck did I just watch? Yeah. And and the one great thing I can say about it is it looked really good. No shit. Yeah, I mean, that's the same thing with Terrifier 3. Like, it it looks, the production value, the acting, like, it, just the quality of it looks way better than the first two films. There were, there were some really nasty scenes. Like, they were saying, you know, people were passing out in the first 10 minutes, and the kills in the first 10 minutes, while brutal, they get topped later on in the film. Like, you can make it that far? Somebody gets a fucking chainsaw up the butt. I won't spoil too much of the movie, but somebody gets a chainsaw off the butt, and Art the Clown doesn't die instantly. No, he's still screaming for a little bit while afterwards. I mean, there's so much stuff that happens to him before he even gets the chainsaw off the butt. But like, shouldn't even made it that far, huh? There's Art the Clown starts inventing things, so he makes a fire extinguisher that shoots liquid nitrogen. So he's like f- freezing people with it and going from there. It, it, <laughs> what I, is the premise of the Terrifier movies? Like, basically, is he just a serial killer? Like like Jason or Michael Myers or what? There what is, e- exactly is the the very small plot of a Terrifier movie? It is, I haven't seen, I've only seen the first two movies once. It's been a minute. Help. But I I feel like they've been trying to retcon more story. In, like, I think the first one was just, you know, they call him Art the Clown, but he's a mime. Like, he looks like Marilyn Manson. He doesn't yell. He doesn't scream. He doesn't talk. So, like, while somebody is 
bleeding out or being melted with acid. He's like silent laughing at them and pointing or like taunting them by rubbing his eyes. So he doesn't really talk. So I think it was just like this mime is just fucking fucking people up. So and he's I, not supernatural or anything. He is. So they okay. In the second one, they they like get into more of like the supernatural stuff and try to like build a backstory for him. And then in this one, there's kind of more revealed. He's more like demonic. So yeah, he is he is in the sense like Freddy and Jason, where you can kill him and then he somehow is back in the next one. But like I I it it blows my mind because it's if you went any harder than this. I would really be like squirming and being like, I don't know, man, this is between the terrifier movies and the sadness that's getting close to what I can handle. And I, I can handle some pretty fucks up stuff in movies. I am very surprised that this movie was the number one at the box office this week made, I think close to $20 million, maybe even more. And I be, I'm there cause they're going to make more. I think they're making at least two more. I would be curious to see now that it's been exposed to the masses if people can fucking handle something this fucked up. Because it's brutal. Like, Carl like Carl didn't even come with me. I had to see this one without her. Because she saw, like, one kill from one Terrifier movie a couple years ago, and she's like, fuck no. Fuck no. I don't want to watch this movie. I don't want to see anything else from it. Like, you showed her one, like, online or whatever just to see if she'd be into it? No, I or think... Or she'd she- at least give it a chance? She came over and I was watching one and it got to the point where Art the Clown kills somebody and she was like, oh, Jesus Christ, can you can you pause this and finish it when I'm not here? I was like, yeah, that's, call her a pussy? that's fair. Joker like, uh, pussy? only grossed $4,000 more than Beetlejuice Beetlejuice this weekend. Oh, my God. And Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is already on VOD. Yeah. Uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice has already made two hundred and seventy-five million dollars. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, but Dude, yeah, I, saw, I saw this thing recently about how LeBron James's favorite movie is Beetlejuice, or one of his favorite movies is Beetlejuice. He was Beetlejuice at uh, one of his. He throws like a big Halloween party, I think, every year because that's like his favorite holiday. And he was Beetlejuice for one Halloween. It's crazy just seeing like a. Six foot eight, two hundred and seventy pound Beetlejuice. <laughs> Fuck, fucking dude's a monster. Uh, but yeah, he can like quote the whole movie and shit. Yeah, good for him. Solid choice. He's got good taste. Yeah, Just figured it was kind of random considering. I don't know who who would have thought that his favorite Halloween, uh, his favorite holiday, would be Halloween. But I guess in closing, uh, I'll give. I'll give. I'll suck. 3.75 Terrifier 3 dicks. Art the Clown dicks? Yeah, Fart the Clown. I'll suck his weenus. And this is one of those things where it's like, you gotta really make sure you're up for the task if you're going to see this movie, because it is epically fucked up. Like, straight up revolting. I was I went and saw it because my friend and his friend were talking about it for years. Like, when this comes out, let's rent a theater out and just invite all of our friends to it. And even in that situation, I was expecting people to get up and walk out. But somehow everybody made it to the end. I feel like in that situation, if you're um, doing that, then, um, if you're going to a movie of a rented out theater, you're you know what you're getting into. I would hope so. There were a couple of people that I don't think knew what they were getting into when the movie ended. <laughs> uh, but I believe that did did you guys see anything at all? I know you didn't, Jeff, but Shuddy. Did I didn't anything? no. Word. All right. Well, in that case, we are going to take our leave and head on over to Patreon land. But if that didn't do it for you, if you still need your fix, please support the homies, us, and sign up at patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour. We got tons of fun shit coming down the pike. Queef or no queef is back, and uh, it is still interesting. I will say that. It's early in the season, but there's still competition between myself, 
Jeff, and Shuddy yeah. playing along with episodes of Deal or No Deal. Yeah, for now. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but lots of fun stuff happening over there. Call my bluff. Check it out. Patreon.com slash Mad Scientist Party Hour. And if you would like to get your hands on a second coming of John Cooper poster, like that butte Shuddy Boy has framed over his shoulder, they're going quick. So act now or forever hold your peace or something like that. Etsy.com. Forever hold your queef. Oh, God damn it. Good one, Jeff. Yeah. Etsy.com slash shop slash John Cooper movie. Check it out. Um, I've I've also entered John Cooper in like five more film festivals. So Fuck yeah, dude. Good luck. There is a chance that things could get quite pricey for me. So the selling the posters, I know it's it's weird selling a poster for a movie that hasn't come out yet, but um it helps it helps me um pay for the entry fees and travel and all the stuff that comes with film festivals and stuff. Um, and what else? What else? Oh yeah, if you want to see everything, like these drawings of uh, Billy Bubbleguts, youtube.com slash Mad Scientist Party Hour. And you can also follow us on Instagram. I'm at Kevin Craft. At Shuddy Boy. At Jeff Ray Records. And at MSPH Podcast. And at John Cooper Movie. And also take a listen to Outkick Bets with Jeff Clark. Yeah, NFL Week 7 coming up. We also got the start of the NBA season in eight days now. Um, so I'm trying to connect with at least uh, at least David, who comes on my podcast routinely to do a over-unders podcast for the East and the West conferences. But should have something out uh, for the NFL Week 7 around Thursday. Um, but I'm going to be so busy over the next five, six months. Kind of looking forward to it. I need my luck to change or else it's going to be just fucking hell. It's going to be hell. <laughs> so. Yeah. There you have it. Outkick Bets with Jeff Clark. Check it out, friendos. I think that might be it. If you want to draw, send your Billy, uh, Billy the Bubble Guts kid, Billy Bubble Guts. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, if you want to make your drawings of what you think Billy Bubbleguts would look like and be put into Dom's music video, send your drawings to WTF Did I Just Watch MSPH at gmail.com. See, it's mm-hmm. not that bad. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. But until next time, something. <laughs>